My final uh, comment in this regard is that uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing we'd like to see is to move towards a system in which not only is our quality uh, continued, you know, we have much greater investment in quality and quality becomes, uh, uh, becomes enhanced through the investments we make in it, uh, but also that it becomes visible. And one of our reasons for our uh, desire to engage much more actively in global partnerships, particularly a partnership with Chia, uh, is to learn how not only can we improve our work, but also to communicate what we are doing to the rest of the world. So this is an area where we would like to continue to work with uh, the Council on Higher Education Accreditation. Uh, I should also mention that, uh, uh, as uh, Ishwar mentioned also, uh, already, that in some of the work that we are doing, we have this three-year project with uh, the UK and the British Council, and we want to involve them in this work as well. So we want to find ways in which we are able to uh, work with others, want to learn better, but then also to communicate better what we are doing around the world. Um, <clears throat> at this moment, we do have a number of very good universities. Um, uh, for, uh, for all the sitting here, uh, the Institute for Business Administration in Karachi uh, provides first-rate education at prices which are a fraction uh, of the cost in, in uh, you know, some of the advanced countries. Uh, we would like people to know about it. We would like students to know that there, are this, there is this opportunity. We'd like to have much more exchanges and much more uh, interest taken from others. Lums, uh, Thayan Ravi sitting here from uh, the University of Management and Sciences. Uh, and, uh, Dr. Arsha was here yesterday. Uh, it's a first-rate university. Um, it again provides uh, world-class education at a cost which is really a fraction of the cost that you might have to pay in other countries. And we'd like the world to know about it. Um, we have other universities which are already very good, and, uh, other, and, and some universities which are on the threshold and can, can become <coughs> excellent universities. Our, education, uh, our engineering and medical universities provide, again, excellent education. And uh, uh, there is already some interest among other our friendly countries for sending their students here, and we'd like to increase that, that, that proportion. But basically we like to bring our you know, older public sector universities to that level where people can begin to see the excellent quality of education that they provide uh, to raise the quality to the level where you know, it becomes visible not only to ourselves but to the rest of the world and, and then to be able to, uh, to, to share that knowledge with, with, with other countries. So that's kind of the longer term vision and agenda that we have. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the real one of the purposes, as I tried to say yesterday uh, when we were organizing this conference, was uh, to get our, uh, let's say, quality community together. They get the quality community together and bring it to life. The quality community is there. Every individual is working in their own uh, sphere. Uh, a number of them are very deeply committed to the challenge of quality. They understand it very deeply. They have uh, deep insight into it. They're trying to bring about the, the, the transformations that they need. Uh, others <coughs> are new to it. Um, perhaps they don't have the same level of insight, but they do have the uh, commitment and they do have the desire to get that insight. Our idea is that this community, by coming together, will be able to share it inside, enrich each other, and then <coughs> build up not only the community itself, but the rest of the community uh, uh, to which it becomes a vanguard. <coughs> this is really uh, a, a challenge that we have. Rita mentioned uh, one point about the comment that I made yesterday. Um, and it is true that uh, uh, distinctions I mentioned both those book distinctions. Uh, this idea that you know something is better than others, um, it's it's not a, it's it's a double-edged sword because it has been used uh, for discrimination. Uh, at the end of the day, quality 
is about discrimination. The real issue is whether the discrimination is for legitimate or for illegitimate purposes. The problem that we now have is that we should not be so paralyzed as to be able to unable to be unable to say anything about it. It is to get us out of that paralysis and to recover the confidence that we need. It's partly, it is almost like, you know, I have, I have a, a teenage daughter now, and uh, when I talk to her, I do not want to talk to her. I, I do want her to be broad-minded. I want her to be ecumenical. I want her to be open-minded. I want her to be tolerant. But I don't want her to be somebody without any values. I want her to have judgment. And it is my task to communicate that judgment. And I cannot communicate that judgment by being silent. And I cannot communicate that judgment by being paralyzed. And I think to a certain extent, it is this paralysis that I'm worried about. Uh, it is also something that I'm worried about when I talked about quality yesterday. It is also something that everything that is about quality is something that we have degraded. And in part, when I was talking to you yesterday about the uh, about art, and about you know, philosophy, and about ethics, uh, and also about uh, uh, music and poetry, uh, I mean, think about it. these are all the disciplines that have atrophied in our society. When I first took over as the chairman of HEC, I gave a talk at one of the universities, and in that talk, I asked the students. To, in trying to uh, motivate them to think about the, the challenges. I said, uh, name a, a, a famous scientist from Pakistan. And about 100 hands went up, and everybody had some names to suggest. Some general scientists and some fake scientists, but nevertheless, people had names to suggest. And then I said, <clears throat> name a famous philosopher from Pakistan. And not a single hand went up. And finally, somebody very sheepishly said, Alama Iqbal. And I said, well, if you need to go back to Alama Iqbal, then we have a very serious problem. We have degraded every uh, branch of knowledge which enables us to judge. That is also part of the challenge that we need to, to, to confront. Quality is fundamental. Truth is fundamental. Education is fundamental. Uh, the, the great <coughs> writer H.G. Wells, almost a hundred years ago, uh, he said, civilization, civilization is a race between education and catastrophe. Civilization is a race between education and catastrophe. Let us learn the truth and spread it as far and wide as we can. Because truth is the greatest weapon that we have. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. This meeting is closed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for your speech and for your very kind words of appreciation for myself and my colleague, Ms. Hadia. It is certainly very gratifying to hear those words as a young professional from a venerable expert as yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the final stage of our closing ceremony. We will be wrapping up with a short souvenir distribution for our partners and committee members. I would like to once again invite on stage the HEC Chairman, Dr. Tariq Banuri, to present these souvenirs. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to invite Rita, the Executive Director of USCFP and her team. I hope we are paying them first.